This resource is the third in a four-part series on test taking. Part 1 provides an overview of test taking, looking at questions to ask to maximize studying effectiveness and general test taking tips. Part 2 explores test anxiety, defining it and its effects, and ways to minimize the anxiety. Part 3 looks at strategies for taking specific types of tests. Part 4 considers what happens if you are not successful on a test. How can you recover from a test failure? When faced with matching questions, read through both lists first. Are there more options than questions? This adds a level of difficulty. As always, do the ones you know first. You may as well make it easy on yourself. Cross off options as you use them. Use any logical clues you can plural or singular, vowel consonant sounds if it has a or an or the like. If all else fails and you aren't sure, use process of elimination and make sure you answer all the questions. Your best bet with true or false questions is to make sure you read the statement very carefully. Watch for key words, absolute statements like never, all, every, or only tend to be false. More restricted terms as some, few, many, or often are most likely to be true statements. Be careful about double negatives. And remember, if any part of a statement is false, then the entire statement is false. You have to be very careful with multiple choice questions. Teachers know the mistakes students will make and those options are always present in the answer options. As you work through multiple choice questions, try to answer the question before you look at the options. If you are unsure about a question, make an educated guess. Read all the options first. Cross off answers you know to be incorrect. Like with true-false questions, extreme words like all or none tend to be incorrect options. However, if there are two options that are close, one of them is probably the correct answer. And always trust your gut. If you have a strong reaction to an answer, it is likely correct. There are certain things that you always want to do when dealing with short answer questions. Always read the question fully, and make sure you understand what is being asked. Always be brief in your answer. There are also things you never want to do when dealing with short answer questions. Never assume the length of the blank has anything to do with the length of the answer. And never have a different number of answers than there are blanks. For example, if a question has three distinct blanks, then the instructor is looking for three distinct answers. When writing essays, be concise. More is not always more. Sometimes longer essays just mean that the writer is rambling because they really don't know the answer. Watch for keywords in the question. For example, a compare-contrast essay is different than an essay that asks you to describe. Use an outline to quickly organize your answer. Make sure that your essay answers all the question parts. Use details to support your statements. Facts, dates, and other nuggets of information help flesh out and improve your answer. And don't forget to include a conclusion. Use it to summarize your essay and prove that you know your stuff. There are certain tips that make good sense, regardless of the type of question. Make sure you answer all the questions, even if you have to guess. You are guaranteed to get blank questions wrong, but maybe you can get lucky with your guess. If you have an initial response, it is probably correct. Initial responses are a way your subconscious helps you remember things you forgot. Look for key words, which take different forms depending on the type of question. Make sure you are well rested when you take your test, and most importantly, study. You don't need any special tricks if you really know your material, so study.